Hello everybody, Chris Profi, Musically Obsessed. I figured I'd just pop on here and show you guys what I've been listening to over the last week or so. So let's just jump right in. All right, I've been spinning Great White's first album. This came out in 1984. Um, if you are expecting to hear songs like Once Bitten, Twice Shy, not really gonna hear it on this album. This is more uh, akin to music like the music of Rat. It's almost like Rat meets Great White. Really like it. It's more heavy metal. And I guess I was reading up on this album. It didn't really do anything for Great White. The record company really didn't like it. So Great White went more a melodic bluesy route. But um, their first album, pretty heavy. So um, kind of tricky and tough to find. But if you can find it, I would definitely pick this up. Really good stuff. 1984, Great White's debut. Uh, I've been spinning Black Flag, of course. This is their album called Family Man. Now, this just proves how Black Flag was pushing the punk envelope. This is a spoken word album and an instrumental album on SST. And, uh, you know, you've got Henry Rollins literally recording in a shed it sounds like he's recording in a shed. And then you've got some really cool instrumental tracks. So really good stuff. Very, uh, you know, controversial cover to sort of match the music and poetry within. So definitely a unique punk release. You either like this album or you don't. Kiss the Elder. I happen to really like it. This goes to show you really how talented Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons were. Of course, you know, you have Bob Ezrin producing as well, but, um, you know, they just are like on the prog train on this album. Really well produced, songwriting is great. You know, is it Dressed to Kill? No. Is it Destroyer? No. But it's got its own place in the Kiss discography, and I happen to really like it. This next band I was turned on to by Vinyl Richie, 100 Flowers. Never heard of these guys before, before Vinyl Richie was talking about them. I guess they formed out of the ashes of the band, The Urinals. I have to check them out as well. The thing that turned me on to these guys was that uh, Vinyl Richie said they sounded like the Minutemen, and they definitely do. And the hype sticker here basically says, if you like the Minutemen, you're gonna like 100 Flowers. So check these guys out, really good album. Uh, I've been spinning Yes, and this is an album that you don't really see shown that often. Yes Shows, a double live album. And, you know, I've been kind of talking to people around saying, hey, why don't we hear about this album? Why isn't this album shown more? I feel like, you know, it was sort of released and nobody knew anything about it. This came out in 1980. I think at this point the band had pretty much broken up, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. But, um... Uh, Nevada, not Nevada, mentioned as well that the track list maybe wasn't uh, very commercial. Because listen, they do parallels, Time in a Word, Going for the One, The Gates of Delirium, Don't Kill the Whale, Ritual Part 1, Ritual Part 2, and Wondrous Stories. So, you know, sort of some tracks that you don't hear that often, which I like, but maybe people who are, you know, just like the casual yes person, they wouldn't purchase this album because, you know, the, the hits aren't on there. So I dig it. Really, really good live set by the band. Sound great. John Anderson sounds great on vocals. Um, been listening to this band. I did not know of them growing up, but they are a band called Icon. And, uh, you know, it's um, on Megaforce. Hard rock, heavy metal band. I mean, you can tell by the look of these guys. The lead singer reminds me, his vocal tone reminds me of uh, David Coverdale from White Snake. So if you like White Snake, you'd probably dig Icon. What collection is complete without Jaco Pistorius, right? This is his album, Invitation. It is a live album. I was listening to this the other day, and I, and, and you know, I always realized how unique Jaco is, but... 
listening to him again, I mean, nobody sounded like him. His bass tone, just his bass melodies. He just had that unique sound uh, that only Jocko could do. And, uh, you know, hearing these live tracks, it's amazing. I showed this album, but I've been listening to it quite a bit. Gun, the hard rock trio from the 70s. Really good stuff. I had said the last time that I showed this, um, you might know the song Race with the Devil. And if you don't, you should look it up. So Gun, you know, sort of psych hard rock. Really cool band. Been listening to a lot of Tangerine Dream. This is their Record Store Day album, Tiger. Really good album. Uh, I like the instrumental stuff. There's vocals on here. I'm still getting used to the vocals, but I think this album will definitely grow on me. But if you're a fan of Tangerine Dream, check this album out. Now, if you guys watch my channel, you're going to know there's three ACDC albums that are my favorite. Flick of the Switch, For Those About to Rock, and Fly on the Wall. So I've been spinning Fly on the Wall. This is a really, really good album. Um, Fly on the Wall, Shake Your Foundations, First Blood, Danger, Sink the Pink, Playing with Girls, Stand Up, Hell or High Water, Back in Business, Send for the Man. You know, just, I love it. What's the year on this? 1985, friends. I was 11 years old. Really good stuff. I want to thank Miranda Holter for sending me uh, Beach Boys Endless Summer. Been really digging this album a lot. Um, I have this and I have Spirit of America, and that's really all I needed from the early Beach Boys. Because um, I prefer later Beach Boys, but definitely loving to have this collection and Spirit of America. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong, right? Okay, these next two, these are classics, and I'm, I'm just going to show them because we all know them, and I'm just going to show you that I've been listening to them. We know those albums. They're classics. Now, I want to thank Aaron Mutha Alamare for the Pretty Maids album. Been digging these guys. When I sh showed this originally, I had never heard of these guys before. And um, it came out on Epic. This came out in um, 1987. How would I describe Pretty Maids? Well, I definitely hear the, some elements of the band Halloween in these guys. Um, and I also just hear regular hard rock from the 80s in these guys. So it's sort of like a mixture of... 80s hard rock and power metal. Really, really unique sound. Really digging this. So thank you to Aaron Mutha Alamare for Pretty Maids. And I did an unwrapping of this album, and I've been liking what I hear on this, too. You 2 um, 3D Dance Mixes. Unique album. Um, you've got When Love Comes to Town. God Part 2 and Desire are sort of some different remixes of those songs. And if you're interested to see what this looks like, I did a video um, a while back, a little a few days ago, on um, unwrapping this and showing you guys. So if you're interested in that, check it out. So that's what's been spinning. Oh, some kids were just yelling outside. In my apartment. Um, I'd love to know what you guys have been listening to. And hopefully your, your work week is going well. Tomorrow's Thursday. So we're going to keep plugging along, right? Or as Rod the Happy Hippie would say, keep on trucking, right? All right, guys, have a good one.